one in just a second. I'm going to be introducing author Vicki Delaney. And the last time I talked to Vicki, we talked about this book, Elementary She Read. And today we're going to be talking about her newest book that just came out. And it's called The Spook in the Stacks. And they're from different series because she writes a lot of book series. But um, they're all amazing. And this is the woman who introduced me to the term cozy books. And um, I'm so blessed for that. I'm, you know, I never knew what it meant. And I went back and watched our interview that we did last year. And I was like, that's right. She's the one who introduced me to cozy books. And that's exactly what her books are. And that's why we love them. So everyone, here is Vicki. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am so excited because I am speaking with author Vicki Delaney and we are talking for the second time. The first time we talked about this book which came out last year and I love this book so much. But today we're talking about her brand new book that she has right there. She's going to hold it up and it's called The Spook in the Stacks. There we go. Perfect. And it's written by Eva Gates, right? That's also me, but it's not the same name. Yes, and I thought maybe you could explain that to us because, you know, it always gets a little confusing when authors change names, but I know you do it for a good reason. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Rochelle. It's always great talking to you. I really oh. appreciate the chance to do this. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so this is the Spoke in the Stacks. I'm trying to get it centered there. There we go. Um, it is Beautiful. the Beautiful. Fourth, fourth in the Lighthouse Library series. Um, yeah, so first of all, I'll mention that it's written by Eva Gates, not by Vicki Delaney, although we actually are the same person. And for the reason for that is that this book was originally a work for hire uh, from Penguin, meaning that, and that's quite common, a lot of people don't realize that, but work for hire is a fairly common way of doing things. Um, that means that Penguin came up with the general idea. Uh, in this case, they had the idea for the setting, which is the Outer Banks, the library and the Bloody Island Lighthouse, you know, the name of the main character, a little bit of her background. And then they set about finding an author to write it for them. And because it's a work for hire, the publisher owns the copyright, not the author. Therefore, the publisher also owns the author's name. And the best, exa best example of that is actually Nancy Drew, Carolyn Keene, um, there were, I don't know how many, quite a lot of people who called themselves Carolyn Keene and just writ, wrote the books. Same with the Hardy Boys, Franklin W. Dixon, and a lot of cozy authors writing today are writing work for hire. So what actually happened with this series, that Penguin canceled it after three books as part of their um, uh, cutback of a lot of their cozies. And Crooked Lane books picked it up. So that's why the fourth one has just come out, and we're really excited about that. I'm really excited about that. So, okay, so you picked it up. So does that mean that you get to keep the name Eva Gates then? Yes. Yeah, well, that means, in fact, I gather it's quite unusual for a penguin to um, actually ever give someone the copyright to a work for hire, and I'm really appreciative of the fact that they did. So basically they returned, all, or no, they, I never had it. They gave me the copyright to the series. So I could have called it by Vicki Delaney if I had wanted, but obviously I want the series to appeal to people that read I want the new book to appeal to people who read the earlier one, and there would be just far too much confusion if I used my real name. So we decided to stick with the Eva Gates. Awesome. I, you know, and I always wondered that, and now that answered the question perfectly. And, you know, I was watching our video that we did last year for uh, your other book, and I realized that you were the person who explained to me what cozy books were. And oh, so <laughs> you were, you were, and now you explained that, like you are just, you're, you give me so much great information. <laughs> you explain, well, it that's right. Exactly. You explain it. Well, you know, because as readers, we don't always understand. And especially genres, they get termed so many different things. Amazon comes up with their own genres sometimes. And then you go in and you're like, I don't, I never even heard of that genre, you know? And yeah. <laughs> so anyway, and I, I love that it was in the Outer Banks, but then I was like, wait a minute, she's Canadian. Have you been to the Outer Banks? Well, I have now. I have never been there before I got the, uh, the contract to write this series. Because I'm a big believer in, not in write what you know, in write what you want to know. <laughs> so I, you know, when they offered me this series and they said they wanted to set it in the Outer Banks, I didn't say, oh, gee, that's not something I can write about because I don't know it. I went down there and I've been now been several times and I had a really 
great time. I stayed in a nice hotel, and I drove all around, you know, taking pictures, not just of the tourist sites, but taking pictures of the streets and finding, like, the house that people live in, what kind of, what houses look like. I had to do exhaustive research into Outer Banks restaurants. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, a writer's work is never done, so I definitely tasted lots of shrimp and grits and hot puppies and things <laughs> like that, right? right. Uh, so that was, yeah, so I um, I did all that so I get a real good feel for it, so I have been down several times, and it's a super place. I really like it, and I'm really pleased that we have our series set there. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, it's I also set, did I, I should mention that the series is actually set in a library, in a lighthouse, and you can kind of see the lighthouse here. This is actually... A real lighthouse. It is the real Body Island Lighthouse, which is located in Cape Hatteras National Park, uh, National Seashore, I think it is, just outside Nags Head. So it's real. You can go there. I've been there. I've climbed the 210 steps to the top, and you get a really great view from out there. But it, it's not big enough to contain a library, meeting rooms, staff break room, you know, various meeting rooms of all sorts of room closet, never mind a, um, an apartment on the fourth floor. So I call it, it's my version of the TARDIS or of Hermione Granger's read it, uh, beat it handbag, meaning far, far bigger on the inside than it appears from the outside. <laughs> That's what I love. And you know what? I live in Pennsylvania and I've never been to the Outer Banks. Okay. Oh, but this, should. Should. I, I definitely should. I mean, and as I'm reading this book, I'm like, why have I never been to like, you know how some places just escape you? Like, for some reason, oh, yeah. I've been all over the shore, but I, you know, I've been down to Florida, all up and down the coast, but I never been. But now, after this yeah, night house, sure. and like, I, I have to go. I have to definitely. And I did. I'm hoping somebody will come with that. I did get an email oh, just a couple of months ago from the staff at the body at the National Park Service, saying that people had come into the store at the Body Island Lighthouse. Of course, the souvenir stores. There are souvenir stores everywhere, right. asking for the book. So they want to stack stock the book in their in their shop. So I do hope that they're able to do that. Oh, that's <laughs> but I was awesome. pleased with that. Was fun, Absolutely, yeah. because you know, little towns like that love when there's books about their town. Because we yes. love yeah. to read about it, especially since you incorporate so much of the Outer Banks in there. And I want to, you know, I want to call this book a beach read for everybody, you know, because it's summer and everybody yeah. likes the term. And I like it because I think it's a perfect beach read, even though, and then I'm like, okay, it's set in Halloween, but it's still a beach read. It takes place in Outer Banks, so it is still a beach read. So yeah. Yeah. how did you come up with the, the whole Halloween theme of this? It, I don't even remember how I hit upon the idea of Halloween. I think that um, I, I just like setting books around certain times of the year. There's so much you can do with it. You know, I write the year-round Christmas series for Penguin as well, and, and that's all about, it's not just set at Christmas, it's set at Christmas in July, the next one's set at Thanksgiving. Halloween's just, I don't know, it's just a great vehicle to, to set a book in. Um, so it is set around Halloween, and one of the things that happens in this series, you can see here, Charles the Library Cat yes. is reading The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Yes. So one of the premises of this series that I have a lot of fun with is that the classic novel reading club in the library is reading a classic novel, and whatever they happen to be reading is quite strongly reflected in the plot of my book. Yes. So for Halloween, I wanted something Halloween-y, but I absolutely didn't want it real horror because this is a cozy series right I don't, and a lot of my a lot of my readers actually like to read the classic novel before they read the book yeah. and I you know I didn't want to get anything really really dark and, and horrible right. um, so the Legend of Sleepy Hollow was just perfect because it's sometimes called a horror story and it's nothing of the sort I mean it's light and it's charming and it's funny and it's just delightful uh, so I thought it worked really well and the basic premise of the Legend of Sleepy Hollow is that uh, two men are vying for the affections of the rich man's daughter so guess what happens in my book two men vie for the affections of the rich man's granddaughter in this case yes. so I just like to take little things like that from the classic novel and incorporated in my book, and I, and I really have a lot of fun with that. I really like doing that. And and I love read as a reader. We love that. Okay, we love when we're reading like the book within the book, and then everything yeah. is like you know when I pick up on something, I'm like, oh, I know where she got that from. Like, yeah. You know? And yeah. It, I, what I what I love about you is that you are so inspiring for women like me. Oh, we've already we've read you know we basically I've still have one child left at home but we basically raised our children and then this is like your second act yes. and I love talking to women like you because it's it's kind of like you know we're still young 
And even though we've done that, it's like we get to there and we're like, what are we going to do now? What am I going to do now? And then you found writing and you just, yeah. and you've written a lot, not just like you wrote one book. I mean, you do so many series, so many books in the series. You just love to write, and I, I think you're so inspirational for women. Okay, on, on that, actually, this is my 30th book. Doctor used to say, 30th published book. So. That is amazing. And, and well, like, how, how is that? How does that feel? Having to, Did you ever imagine that that was going to oh, happen like that? Well, no, I certainly didn't. I mean, my, my first novel, I figured it was probably, you know, one-off, and I'd never do another one. And, and um... Yeah, so it's all just growing from there, and it's, it's been, and, you know, like you said, it's second life. My children are all adults now. They don't live with me. Um, I'm retired. I used to be a computer programmer and a systems analyst, and I'm, you know, I'm retired from that, and this is a whole new life for me, and it's just great. And that's great to have, for me to have had the opportunity to, to do that, too. To be, yeah, to be able to do it full time and to, yeah. you know, yeah. and to be as successful as you are. And, you know, it's not like... It gets intimidating, I, I think. It gets intimidating when we see younger women, like they've gone to, you know, they have their master's degree in, you know, creative writing or whatever, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to start there. No, you don't have to start there. You can just start writing and you kind of learn it as you write. You, you, yeah, you can. I, I went to um, community college and I took some courses there. This is when I was working. I worked at, um, at, at Canada's largest bank. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they did there is they paid for people to do adult education courses. It didn't have to be related to your job or anything. They believed in further education. I don't know if they still do, but I hope they do. Um, so I wanted to take creative writing. So look, no, this is why I was working. So it was at night. I went and took some creative writing courses at the community college. Now, I don't think that's essential. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it can help a lot. Right. You know, you can't teach, quote unquote, talent, but you can certainly teach the, the, the skills you know, how to structure a book, how to write dialogue, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, like, just the basic. But, you know, nowadays you can take online courses, too. You know, that oh, is, yeah. there's, yeah. there are so many, so, such a variety of online courses. If you can't get out to take any of those courses, yeah. you can do it that way, too. But That's certainly true. What I wanted to tell you is that I have a local bookstore really close to here. It's not a library, but it's a local bookstore. And I had done an interview over there. I, you know, was going to meet this author. And I am highly allergic to cats, okay? <laughs> now, I grew up with a cat, but over my adult life, you know, for whatever reason, I became just very sensitive to cats, even though I love them and whatever. So I go walking into this bookstore to do an interview with this man, and what happens but all these cats start coming. Well, cats, squirrel. <laughs> And, you know, I said to the owner, like, I'm, re you know, I'm allergic to cats and I have to do this interview. And he was like, well, I'll put them in another room. Well, anyone who has that allergy knows that that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, right, but right. as I was reading your book, I'm picturing like, because, you know, there's something about that, right? I don't know. Uh, have you seen that? Have you seen a cat in like, I don't know why this bookstore had so many cats running around, but. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the bookstore in town near me, Picton, Ontario, the store is called Books and Company. They have a resident cat. His name is Pushkin. Um, you know, he sort of lies on top of the shelves and, and all that sort of stuff. So Pushkin, in fact, is a little bit the inspiration for Charles in my book. And I was, I don't know if you remember, it was a year or two, two years ago, maybe, there was a big hoorah, I think it was in Florida, where some library, the library system or the town, ordered them to get rid of the library cat. And it became this really famous thing that people were protesting, you know, getting rid of the library cat. So it's certainly not unheard of. Yeah, and not, but, and I feel bad because it, I, I think that, you know, they should be there. I just have a hard time. You just thought when you're around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I do understand, like, there are other, you know, if they want to attract people in there like me, like, I'm not going to go there very regularly because I can't, you know, it's not worth it's not worth the reaction, but, you know? but I did love how you incorporate. I, I loved it. I loved the cat in there, but it was just kind of funny because I kept picturing my experience at that bookstore and I was like, I wonder if that's a thing. I mean, you know, cause they do just hover around. They don't really interfere. You know, it's not like a dog. Like you have to, you know, take care. Cats are very yes. like, you know, they take care of themselves and they just kind of sit themselves wherever and watch people and, you know. Yeah, but even, it's certainly, you know, when I was younger, you never got pets in the stores, but the Sleuth of Baker Street bookstore in Toronto has a dog, um, and it's a good-sized dog, it's um, about the size of a standard poodle, uh, very, of course, these dogs, you know, can be in the store all day like that, it has to be very well behaved, and it is, and it's just there in the store. I love that. All right, I want to yeah. tell everybody, I, I'm a quotes person, okay, I love finding quotes. 
and I love first lines and lately I've been finding last lines and they're not giveaways because they're not I mean you have to read the shouldn't be, yeah. yeah they shouldn't be and but I love the last line in this book because what I I want to show what I want to tell everybody is that these code this is the way that you feel when you read one of your books and the last line in this book is the smile he gave me in return lifted my heart and I was oh. like because the book lifts your heart because it's a good story and it's and you know you want to tell people well it's a murder mystery yeah but it's a good feeling murder mystery and I love it. you know I mean you love the characters and you love the story and you're so good at describing the place I felt like I was there you know it's it's that kind of book thank you yeah that, and that's what I'm hoping to achieve so I, I like that point that you put about the uh, I'll remember that for the ending next books yeah <laughs> Yeah, I just recently I've been like, you know what? There are some good last lines. First lines are really awesome too. And I do love how you start the book off about Halloween and saying, you know, well, I'm not really into Halloween because I don't like to be scared. And I was like, me neither. Like you started the book off that way. And I'm like, that's me. I'm not a big Halloween person because I really don't yeah. like scary yeah. movies and I don't like to be scared. Love the candy, but you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that should be kind of scary too when you're faced with that giant bowl of candy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but let's see the cover. Who do you have do these covers for you? Oh, the, the publisher handles it, so I don't have any really have any input into it. But you know what? Look at the colors. How like your books have a theme, even though they're under the different name. But I yeah. just wondered because look at the colors. You have such bright, vivid colors on your on your yeah. book covers. Yeah, I don't I don't even know who the um, who the cover artist is. Um, but they what they do is they usually send me a sketch. Mm -hmm. So I can sort of see if it's if it's falling within the idea of what I want. So that it would just be a pencil sketch and that, and then I can sort of say, that, you know, that's too big or something like that. And this one, it was actually too dark. It looks quite dark at the bottom. The, the first draft I saw, I did say that it was too much. The pumpkins were too dark. Oh, right. It gave it a mood that the book doesn't have. Right. But look at so you the, want to keep the really bright light colors. Yeah, yeah, look at the ocean and the sky. I mean, and then the yeah. grass. Like, I love the colors on that. And I just love, I mean, I love the cat, too. I, that book cover is perfect. I love it. Yeah, great. I, Thank you. I'm really pleased with it, too. I love the cat. He's so cute. Yeah, he is. So, okay, what is next? What is next? Well, the next um, for me is um, Vicki Delaney will be back in November with the fourth Sherlock Holmes bookshop series. Uh series book. Uh, that's called um, A Scandal in Scarlet. And that, that series is set on Cape Cod, so it's another ocean destination. In this case, actually, in that case, some of the action takes place at a yacht club, so there's boats and sailing and stuff going on in that. And that book will be out in November. And then the next Lighthouse Library mystery is called, um, it's already finished, it's called Something Red, Something Dead. And that's actually set in January. And part of the reason, which is not tourist time, but part of the reason I set it in January is in this book, uh, Lucy's cousin Josie gets married. And because, as is mentioned throughout the series, she owns a she owns Josie's Cozy Bakery. Her fiance is a chef at a top restaurant, chef and owner. That they're incredibly busy people. So the only time they can really slow down enough to plan their wedding is if they have it in January. Oh, that's so awesome. I've done that. So it's about yeah, it's about Josie's wedding and me. All does not proceed exactly as planned, and that will be book will be out. I think it's March. Well, you know where to find me in November, okay? Because I want to read it. I will. I will definitely I be in touch. Because I love this one. So I definitely want to read the next one. Right. But anyway, thank you, Vicki. Thank you so much for contacting me. I love talking well, to you. <laughs> thank you have, so much. Yeah, I will have all of Vicki's links. And the link to her newest book is going to be listed below uh, the Amazon link. You can hit that button, hit it. You can buy it right away and read it right. the same day if you want. Right. <laughs> so. Thanks so much. I love talking to you. Yes, thank Bye. you. Have a great day, Vicki. Bye-bye. Bye. Everyone, I'm back. Thank you so much for watching my interview with Vicki. I love her and her books are so good. And you know, this is the one, the only one I have by her. But I mean, look at the colors. I was really trying to tell her like, these are beautiful books. Amazing. And her books are so much fun. So um, like I said, all her links are going to be listed below here. I can't wait to talk to her again. And thank you guys for watching.